What's going on, everybody? I want to welcome y'all to episode two of the Control Your Experience podcast. I'm your host, Alan Epps, and I'm welcoming you to control your experience at all times, not just here, but in your daily life, because that's the whole point. Um, we got a lot to talk about today. First and foremost, shout out to Kenstra Mentals, Kenstra Mentals, like instrumentals, Keys. Uh, you can find him on YouTube. He is the uh, creative behind that little bot there, Look at the Coons, which you guys might have first got ex- uh, exposed to it on Instagram uh, right after the RNC where Herman Cain and those assorted Negroes <laughs> were over there at their little super spreader event, just as happy as can be. Uh, but it's a whole bop, lyrics and everything. So make sure you check them out on uh, YouTube. And I want to thank them again for letting me use that on my pod because I'm not paying them. So yeah, there we go. Uh, like I said, I hope everybody had a good week, good weekend. I wanted to get this out a couple of days ago, but I personally had a COVID scare. I say had because I got my test this morning. Uh, today's the 7th and um, I haven't gotten the results back, but I'm confident that I don't have it. It started out as some uh, weird, like, you know, like swimmer's ear when you get out the shower and you just feel like fluid in your ear. It was only in one ear and I went off like three, four days and then suddenly my jaw started getting tight. So, of course, I went on the internet and started diagnosing myself, and, you know, the sinuses is all back there. So, I just figured it was a drainage thing, tried sleeping on the other side, because it only happened right before bed. And that worked for, like, a day, and then it started getting really bad. So, like, my jaw right now feels really tight. Um, I don't know if any of you guys ever box or just got your ass whooped, but if you if you get pop uh, right in your jaw, you know, even if you don't swell up or anything, it can get real tight to move for a couple of days. But... I ain't taking no losses, so I don't know what was going on. Long story short, though, uh, I was chilling, and then on Saturday, actually, when I was leaving the gun range, my nose just stopped working, like, it, and it was instant. It wasn't like, you know, I have very light allergies. Typically, when, for my allergies to flare up, everybody who has allergi- allergies is on the verge of death. So I'm driving, and then suddenly, there was no buildup of congestion. It was just like, I'm breathing, I'm breathing, and then suddenly I can't breathe. Like, somebody stuck me underwater, and my nose just wouldn't work. And that happened, that went on for like a four or five hours. I was trying to blow my nose. Nothing was coming out. So I was just like, God damn it, I got the cooties. Uh, but yeah, I got my test coming. I'm, I'm being forced into the basement. You know, they're feeding me on a on a tray and everything like that. But uh, hopefully I'll have my test within the next couple of days. But if I was still sick, my nose actually feels better now. So that's why I don't think I have it. But um, if I was, you know, I still were going to bring the pod to you guys any way I could. We could have done this as my flu game, like, like you know, Michael Jordan. Uh, I would have had to look up stats because I'm not really a hoop head like that. And, uh, with, you know, my jaw tight, this could have been maybe gave y'all high 16. Like, my, my through the wire, but no wire. I also don't rap, so so there's that. But, you know, the pen is legendary. That That's why a lot of you are here. You guys uh, were hip to me. If you weren't already following on my Facebook page, but you might have been now based on my little tiff I had with a relative of mine, which is a large part of the subject that we're going to be talking about, animal control. You can guess that animal, the trash pan himself, the coon. Uh, but anyway, yeah, that, that's what we're getting into today. Uh, my uncle, and I use the word uncle loosely, um, let me preface this. I'm not the type of person to just you know, sell people out or to air people's dirty laundry for ha-has or for online clout, whatever it is. His shit came out because it was quite material to my arguments against his cooning and everything like that. Um, and I, I regret nothing. I don't say nothing on these internets. I don't say nothing on this podcast. I don't say nothing that I wouldn't say to whoever I'm saying it to right in their face. And if, if it's a problem, we can shake, my man. Like, I'm, I'm not scared to let him go. More importantly, I'm not scared of an ass with me. You just gonna have to beat my ass. And... I'm probably still going to talk my shit, so it, it is what it is. You're probably not going to weep my ass, though, so just, just fair warning. Uh, but, yeah, so I was just minding my business, and my dad, who is his half-brother, so my grandfather, uh, who is no, no longer with us, adopted my Uncle Jamon at some point when he got with his ex, who is now ex-wife, Martha, who is also passed on. And uh, so I met Jamon when I was, like, I was like nine, ten. They lived in Kansas City. Missouri, I spent like uh, half a summer, if not the whole summer, out there with them. You know, we were kids. It's cool. And then I live in Maryland, so we didn't really see each other that much. There was an on, on-off uh, family reunion up until my grandfather divorced his mom. And I think the last time I saw him, I was probably like 16, 17. 
and whatever. And you know, no love loss or anything like that. We just live far apart. Niggas don't have cars. Like, what? when we gonna see each other? Um, you know, and when you get to the family reunion, you hear dirt about people, or as much as they'll let the kids know and everything. Uh, and I just heard, you know, he got into various trouble. Nothing crazy, but like, you know, like typical juvie type shit, like, you know, drugs, um, might have been selling them, I think mostly possession, uh, and I just assumed it was weed, I didn't really just get into people's business, because I didn't care, but, uh, stuff like that, and then after the death of his mother, who, um, she lived in Atlanta, so my dad, who is his half-brother, went down there to, for the funeral, uh, to help him make arrangements and everything like that, and I couldn't, I was at work, um, I didn't have any time off or anything like that, I, I absolutely would have went if I could have. So up until, like, recently, there was no bad blood between us at all. Like, I mean, like I said, I knew he had had, had his own challenges or whatever, but that was the extent of it. It was Jamal. He was cool. Uh, my dad came back with a little bit of tea. Uh, my dad's not even really a gossipy person, which makes this funny. <laughs> but I uh, just came to find out, I asked him, you know, how, how's Jamal doing? He's like, oh, uh, he, you know, he's got a bunch of white women he got on his line. And I'm like, oh, word? True. And then, you know, my next question is what they look like. And he's like, huh? Which, my dad is nice, so I knew that meant, mm, but whatever, you know what I mean? And he had kids like a spade hand, you know, one of the possible, some, some that he was denying or whatever, and evidently he had gotten into it, one of the baby mamas, and they were all fight. Uh, he just thought it was funny to see them at uh, fussing at each other at his mom's uh, wake and services and all this other bullshit, you know what I mean? And mind you, before the death, at some point, he had called my dad, and my, again, my dad's not the one to gossip, I just have to hear about it, mostly from my mom, bitching about my dad giving people money, but uh, that at some point he asked my dad for money. Now, whether or not it was for a specific purpose or not, who knows? But I do know that we don't really rock like that. Not that we dislike you, but I mean, we shouldn't be your first call for money. So it's got to be an emergency. So it could have been bills. It could have been bail. It could have been child support. It could have been anything. But I know all I know is you asking people for money and my dad gave it to you. Whatever. That's it's his, it's his bank. I don't care. But my mom being who she is, uh, you know, she she did some snooping and found out that he had some open cases. And one of them was for domestic abuse. Uh, now, again, innocent until proven guilty. I don't know this woman. It could, it could be something as simple as he yelled at me or he grabbed my wrist or he could have tuned her up. But from what I understand, because for some reason, these people tend to reach out to my dad. I, well, not some reason. He makes himself available to people. But they, they people feel comfortable telling my dad shit. And not just people like my Facebook friends I found will be adding my dad or I'm sure he adds them too if they're cute but uh and just be telling my dad stuff like I guess personal stuff I'm like why are you why are you telling him this and I realize a lot of people don't have dads in their lives or don't have good relationships I just you know I'm mind my business as much as possible the only reason I know anything about Jamon's issues is because people told me I don't go looking for people's shit because I don't care I got my own shit going on but it is what it is so you imagine my surprise when I wake up one morning for my teleworking gig and I see just this coontastic post like like it's, it was just it was just fucking terrible and the, I'm not gonna go through all of the posts here like I said if you're here by now you probably read it if not you can go on my Facebook it got shared like I think your last count was like 900 something times whatever but the long and short of it was that my illustrious uncle felt that anybody who bought into Black Lives Matter is brainwashed because it's just a liberal media this, that, and third, and they nobody shows up when a gangbanger kills a gangbanger, and when the Black Lives Matter, the, the typical Fox News bullshit tropes that, at best case scenario, he was just ignorant. Now, I don't say ignorant as an as a insult. I say it as, like, you just don't know. The definition of ignorance, not knowing what you're talking about but i don't i wasn't willing to float him the benefit of the doubt for several reasons first and foremost that as soon as he posts this you've got white women and, and white people out there ask yes thank you tell them tell them brother you know like i'm like this is what you're doing like this this don't raise the hair on your back if you genuinely feel concerned for this community that you are a part of whether you like it or fucking not you know no matter how many mediocre becky let you touch them like this don't bother you that they're coming up here and, and no, they don't because it's stroking your ego. It's making you feel like you're one of the good ones because I guess you've turned your life around, which you may have. I, I, don't, I don't, and if you're watching this, I don't, fuck you. But you may have turned your life around. I don't know. I'm not trying to say that you're worthless or anything like that. What I'm saying is, I know you, fam. I know you. So they're stroking your ego that you're one of the good ones and you're, they come out in droves to wag, when you wag your finger at your people. Boy, where were they when you were asking my dad for money? 
That's just that's just what I want to know. You know, you got all these white women on your call on your line, but they couldn't bail you out. They wouldn't bail you out. They won't help you pay whatever the fuck you need to pay. So that and that was my issue with him. And I tried to keep it civil at first, but I the, the rage just started. I mean, first and foremost, I broke down. You know, like black people, black lives have always mattered to black people. It is what it is. And before the seven years, uh, uh, it's been seven years since Black Lives Matter, the organization was founded. But before that, and still, black people were in the streets trying to save ours. Unfortunately, we're, we're, we're trying to shovel a driveway, you know, plow, plow a driveway with a, with a teaspoon. And, and it's still snowing. It's not like the snow has stopped. It's still snowing. But nobody wants to address the weather. Everybody wants to address the, the method. And why, why don't we have more spoons? Or why don't we, like... So, and, and I tried to bring that up to him. I'm like, look, we're in the streets, okay? This is just yet another fight we have to fight. It would be nice if we could just focus on us, but the fact of the matter is there is a system here that is constantly pushing the envelope, and then, oh, by the way, they're murdering us in the street. Stop confusing the sentiment of the phrase Black Lives Matter with the very real and very focused movement Black Lives Matter. Let me get myself... <laughs> I don't remember to do that, man. I spent the money on this thing. Like, like you, you gonna get these gunshots? Because uh, that's not what it is, and that's that's not why why they're here. Their scope is very well outlined, in that they are protesting against and working against the social injustice and the sanctioned state murders of black people without due process or against police violence. If we are pushing for police reform, that is what they're there for. Okay. So to bring them up as an organization and any other conversation is beyond disrespectful. It's deflective and it's, it's an instrument of propaganda. That's, that's what it is. You're trying to shift the conversation from what they're talking about. All because you can, you can take the, the name and try to shift it to a, a conversation about feeling, about what you think instead of the facts at hand. That, that's what it is. Because if you really gave a shit about Chicago, or any of these other inner cities where there's so-called black-on-black crime, you will be in the streets trying to talk to these, these kids. You will be in the streets trying to do something. And in the streets, you will realize you are not alone because there are other people that have been there doing the same shit. The same people who go to Black Lives Matter rallies, the same who, people who volunteer for the organization Black Lives Matter. So that your, your, your so-called concern is thinly veiled and you're just putting on for these white folks. It, it was it was clear. And then he tried to bring up how oh, he volunteers for the kids. Well, I like, know my nigga. I'm pretty sure that was a condition of your probation or whatever the fuck to keep you from going to jail. And I'm not saying it's not important, but the fact of the matter is, you don't get to preach to anybody. Not only because you are a criminal yourself, but the why you're a criminal. Okay, because there's a difference between somebody who the odds are stacked against them, who whose schools are shit. There are no resources. Their parents are are gone because of drug addiction. Uh, or, or because they were unduly criminalized, so they're doing mandatory minimum somewhere. So they have, they have to defend them for themselves. They don't know where their next meal is coming from. They don't know if they're going to have heat or lights at the house, if they even have a house. They don't know where their clothes are coming from. So, yes, they're out there in the wild making it the best way they can, not knowing if they're not caring if they see tomorrow because they don't know if they're going to see tomorrow. That was never you, motherfucker. Never you. Because you had two parents. You play. I went to your fucking football games, your football camps in the summer in Kansas City. The Midwest gets fucking hot. So that's how I noticed was in some school shit. They were paying money for you to go to football practice. I remember that. Because I remember saying, coming home and saying, Dad, I want to play ball because I know I'm better than this nigga. He's just older than me. So, so that, that's burned into my mind. So you had every opportunity. I'm not saying that, you know, maybe your relationship with my grandfather and your mom wasn't the best. I don't know. I know mine wasn't with my parents, but that I didn't become a criminal. So you, you had no fucking excuse, and you did it anyway. Now, life happens, and, and I'm not saying that you have, you don't deserve a voice or anything, but you have an obligation to think before you use that fucking voice. And if you still believe that bullshit, do what I do. Check yourself before somebody else has to. That should have been a, that should have, that should have bothered your spirit to see all these white people chiming in, yes, 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 yes. And maybe, maybe five years ago, six years ago, I would have been like, really, cuz, this is what we're doing? Can we talk about this? But it's been seven years and hundreds, thousands of bodies, black bodies laying broken in the street at the hands of law enforcement. And I don't have the exact numbers, 
we, we and most of us can recognize the 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 well-known names, the ones that were on video, the ones that made headlines and everything like that. But since George Floyd has died, over 300 black people have been killed by at the hands of law enforcement. And that's just within a year. So we're not going to talk about the last seven years. So for you to not get it right now is a choice. It's a conscious choice. It's not a, I don't understand. If you, and if you don't understand, you don't want to understand. So that's also a choice. You are willingly becoming an agent, and I have no patience for you or any other coon that, because that, to me, that is an act of violence. It is an act of war. Because we are at fucking war right now. It might be a silent war. No, Alan's not telling you to go out and shoot anybody in the face yet. But that is an act of war. You, you, it costs nothing to shut the fuck up. But you went out your way, and you were even double down. The real thing that made me get in your ass, because I saw you, oh, I'm going to make a video about it. I was like, no, that's not what we're about to do. You are not about to go viral with my last name with this coon shit. Nah. Uh-uh. No. Not today. So I tried to keep it on brand. But as I as I broke down why you were off base in every, in every aspect of your little feeble argument of who does Black Lives Matter to, what are they doing about it? Like, like and, why, and why it's essential? And why black-on-black crime is a myth? I realize that if anybody should fucking know, it's you. It's and, and then I realized you do know. You fucking know. Because you're you're never the smartest person, but you ain't fucking stupid. So you're purposely doing this because the, somebody's feeding you on the other side. And you know the term sellout. You know, w w most times it's just assumed that you sell your soul, but also ain't equal because not every sellout gets gets the, the the butter biscuits you know if you look at the, the main talking heads on the conservative wing to lecture black people the, these are prominent people you got Herman Cain who they're still milking him in his grave Herman Cain died and his Twitter is still going in support of Trump wagging his finger you know like yay black people for Trump I think it's dead and they couldn't even bother to mention him at the RNC I watched that whole shit show and not one mention of this coon who dedicated decades of service just for just just to, for the illusion of being in the house and that was a billionaire or a billion, millionaire at least at the very least you're broke my nigga like like nobody listens to you i i didn't look at your facebook because again i don't do this for clout but i would be surprised if you had more than four or five hundred friends on there so it costs you nothing to shut the fuck up. But you went out of your way. And we're going to double down with a fucking video. No, not today. Not today. So, and, and then I had no choice but to lay it bare. Because it's like, the fact of the matter is, this this isn't a, a, a in the vacuum hot take that you gave, that in a bubble that you just didn't know. You weren't exposed to things. You are in the system. The only people who would care about you if you were in, still in the system right now, in jail, are black people because to them you're just another pair of black ass in a cot somewhere making them money that's another statistic we're the only ones who would, who, would, who would give a shit about you that you would even think to ask to put something on your books and this is what you do and for what i could see if you were like travis scott and you had you know you you got millions of dollars out this shit and 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 you were fucking a, a kardashian or, or or whoever you know kanye whatever what do you get for it besides them average, average, average ass bunnies? And that's being kind. And the only reason I'm being kind because they didn't do this. I don't know nothing about them. I, for all I know, that you, you, this is your angle to get with them. If they don't know that you don't feel like this, that you're doing it for them. And, they, and they're not the object of my rap. It's you. So, of course, he went on and deleted all the comments and everything and then blocked me. But talking all this Ruba shit, like I won't slap the shit out of him. And I mean that, that's fair. He last time he saw me, I was maybe ninety eight pounds, hundred pounds, whatever. You know what I mean? But we're six years apart, my nigga, and I'm thirty five. I'll beat the shit out of you. And on the off chance that you still can whip my ass, you just gonna have to whip my ass. I promise you, you're not ready to take it the way I'm ready to take it. Oh, he was talking crazy to me again behind the block. I gotta hear about this shit. I don't go to his page. People have to just, are just hitting me up about this shit. Like, oh, you talking about? You know who I get down? I'm like, what? Slapping around white women? Because that's what I'm pretty sure you got your case for. Slapping one on a white woman. So, 
that that's supposed to put fear in my heart. No, I'm not about to drive down to fucking Atlanta for you. If I go to Atlanta, it's because I got broads in Atlanta. Yes, shameless designer steal. But it ain't for you, but but I can make a detour, my nigga. But I invited him up for Thanksgiving in the eye jam. He ain't going to come through because he ain't been through in years. And he damn sure ain't going to come through now when he knows it's on site. And, and I mean that. It's on site. Like, I don't intend on seeing him. But when I see him, it is what it is. I, I haven't seen that man, like I said, since I was... 17 and i'm 35 now so if, if it stays that way good on it good good for you good for me whatever but if it don't more to follow but that's the attitude that we need to have and when i say we i mean all of us you got to call people out all right you know we tell white people that uh who swear racism is gone is that it's because you don't check your white friends when they're making the racist jokes you don't check your white friends when they're they're putting smut on your black co-worker's name you don't check your white friends when they're calling the police for black people mind their fucking business. We gotta do the same shit. Because the only reason that white people have these talking faces to put to, to put a, a black face on their bullshit is because we let them. It's because we let them. Because if we nip that shit in the bud, they would still be there. They're, they'd still be coons. But their appeal to become the, the face of cooning would be a lot less because they wouldn't have the audience. We would laugh at them. They would, white people would laugh at them. No. White people, the Republicans are trying to find these young, conservative, Negro faces to identify with the, the younger Americans. They even got that stupid rapper who, plot twist, evidently that nigga needs a kidney infection or, so, or a kidney transplant, and it got a GoFundMe. This motherfucker been talking about, oh, Obama, and again, I'm, I'm not necessarily an Obama stan, but, you know, oh, Obama this, right wing that, Trump is going to make it, but, nigga, you don't have medical benefits, and Trump ain't about to give you none, so now your medical insurance is GoFundMe? Ha, nigga. Ha, huh, put that in the bar. You know, we, we got to nip this shit in the butt. Steel sharp and steel. And a lot of you niggas, unfortunately, are some tinfoil ass niggas. It's just, it's just what it is. All right? Like, like, if we are scared to call people out, young, old, just because they are friends, because they are our parents, our aunties, our cousins, our mothers, our fathers, we, we got to close ranks. We got to tighten shit because this shit ain't working no more. All right, and I'm not suffering nobody on my watch. It, it is just not gonna happen. I check myself, so you damn sure know I'm gonna check you. And for some reason, YouTube thinks must think it's funny because, you know, they keep putting these these prominent coons on my fucking YouTube feed. I don't follow these motherfuckers. Lately, it's been that uh, what's that Bama's name? Officer, hold on. YouTube. Tatum, Officer Tatum, and it's like the stupidity is dripping off, and, and when I say stupidity, I'm not talking about his views, I mean, they're dumb, but I'm not talking about his views or like his political affiliation, like, I am 100% certain that he is stupid, like legit dumb, like the type of nigga to copy off, that they'll be asking me for my homework in, in high school, I, I would pay money to see his high school transcripts, I, that nigga is dumb, and not only that, he's weak-willed. Like, and it's not just his little southern accent, because I, I, I went to school in Tuskegee, so I don't think people who, who have a southern drawl are just stupid. No, it's him. It's the, it's, the, it's the, I bet you that analogy section of the ACT or the SAT or whatever it is, beat his ass. Because the way he makes these leaps from something happening to this, it, it's just ridiculous. And it's no wonder that he found moderate success as a police officer, because that's all they got to do. Oh, does this check a box? Okay, we'll let the judge figure it out. That, so that's that. If you notice, a lot of cops barely have an associate's degree. It's it's on Bama's that, and I got love for ethical police who do it right. So I'll, I and I hate that I even fucking have to qualify that, and that's the last time I'm gonna do it. But there's it's no it's no mystery why a lot of these motherfuckers are the dudes who, you know, play ball in high school, never got their look at the at the next level, or motherfuckers who were bullied in high school and suddenly they get off uh, a position of authority or whatever and, you know, they, they didn't get college scholarships so now they're working here so they can get whatever local jurisdiction's benefits to finish their degree, whatever it may be, all right? But these motherfuckers are not smart. And they go to the little academy for, what, six weeks, two months, three months? I don't know who, how long they are, but I know they're not that long. And suddenly they're all experts on law. Like, we don't have to send lawyers to four years of law school and then they got to go get... Uh, bar certified to practice and all that, but this idiot that, that was cheating off your paper in civics is an expert on the law and got a gun. All right, so I have he this the dumb is just 
even if he wasn't talking this nonsense, I would just immediately like, please don't splash your stupid on me. Unfortunately, he's hooked his stupid to a water hose, a fire hose even. And he just stays on my page. And of course, his hero is Candace Owens. And Candace Owens all dry haired like, it, what? All these black women who spout this shit, and I, I want to use a word, but I'm not going to do it, at least not right now, because I don't want to hear y'all mouths. But it, it applies. They just always have the worst hair decisions. Like, it's either just dry split ends or just like a fucking wig from the original Star Trek. Like, like what the fuck? Like, and you can tell it's because they don't have any black friends. They're not in the culture. So this is how that happened. Now, whether or not they were cast aside or whether or not that's just where they were born because their parents fled. The, who knows? But the point is, they ain't gang. They just got a fucking tan. You know what I mean? And they want to bullet down. Oh, you're making fun of my aesthetics. No, your aesthetics are why we're making fun of you. It's a difference. It's not causing us. It's a symptom of it. And evidently she's pregnant, so now she's about to hatch another coon. So th that's why it is of the utmost important that we police our importance that we police our own. All right. Just like racists ain't getting old and dying out, they're passing it on to the next generation. So are these fucking coons. So we need to nip that shit in the butt whenever we see it. it it's it's just that simple. Um, what else we got going? On? Where is my sticky note? Ah, here we are. Um, a lot going on for me this weekend other than my COVID scare. I got a new gun. And uh, actually, I got a new gun and a half. The new gun, I have a Benelli M4 shotgun uh, for my home defense gun. I paid a pretty penny for it. Got to go to the range. I posted a video about um, if anybody's thinking about getting a shotgun for the house and what they need to do. So be sure to check that out on the YouTube channel as well. And I also started a conversation about... Um, ammunition um the goal not only just to be talking about guns but to put them in the context of the current gun climate and the gun debate in this country because a lot of you are voting democrat and whatever i'm not going to get into it because trump is evil whatever if you're going to vote democrat vote democrat but understand that they also use us to disarm us because if you notice that the prominent face of the anti-gun violence is the kids in the schools and some black mother who's lost their child Okay, and at, black people have been buying guns in droves in record numbers because a lot of you finally realize that these races ain't going nowhere. Electing Biden is not going to fix it any more than electing Barack Obama ended racism in this country. So if you win and you get him in there, and you're going to lay down your arms proverbially because a lot of you just buying the gun, going to go to the range, shoot a mag if that, put it in a box and wait for a noise in the night. That's that's your ideal situation. You're not training. But understand that if and when Biden wins, the Trump tires didn't go anywhere. In fact, they're going to multiply. Because Trump only got elected because he was right. Trump said, I'm only here because of Barack Obama. Yeah, you're right. But not because of any kind of policies. Because white people had enough that they were willing to put anybody white in following a, a Harvard graduate, internationally respected black man. They had no scandals, no, no side bitches, no, no multiple wives, no kids, no pain, no porn stars, no none of that. That's why, so he's absolutely right. You're in office because of Barack Obama, but not because of the line that, that you're trying to feed the people. But I mean, that, that's, just, that's just another instance of white mediocrity being juxtaposed perpetually against black excellence. Um, you move over to the NBA, you know, they had their protests, which I respect in the, that they were willing to do this. And I got time. I mean, the jerseys are cool and all, but I'm... I'm not for the performative. We talked about last pod when I had my, uh, my guest, uh, T. Marie, about the marches and why I'm not with the marches. So the, the jerseys and everything kind of were chanting about some marches. And I'm not telling black people not to use their platform. Um, and that's another thing. Why does Candace Owens and, and, and Officer Dumbass get to say, oh, stick to basketball, you use your platform for this, when they don't mind when athletes parrot the same bullshit they're doing. Oh, and by the way, you motherfuckers don't have no degrees either. 
So what makes it okay for you, average random person who only exists because the, the machine is telling us that you exist to sell your book and, and whatever it is, but this athlete who only has a platform because he's at the best in the he's among the best in the world at what he does. You're not even the best at anything, you know. Maybe you have a YouTube following, but you're not the most follower person on YouTube. You weren't the most copyist cop. You weren't the most whatever the fuck Candace Owens did. You weren't the driest haired woman on the planet. Close. So, so who? Where the fuck do you get off? But they shouldn't have. They shouldn't have a voice because Laura, Laura Ingraham, whatever that crypt keeper looking ass bitch. Who are you? Who anointed you the gatekeeper of information? So that's that's why, you know, I, I don't really watch hoop like that anyway. I'm not a super basketball fan. I watch the finals or if the Wizards in the playoffs, but I'm not just about to watch a bunch of games. It's just too many games for me. But I enjoy basketball. Like if, if somebody got me tickets or that, I would absolutely go to a basketball game. But I, if I'm gonna watch sports, it's it's pretty much gonna be football or boxing or UFC, and even then it's gonna be like a big fight. So, but I don't mind the, the players doing what they feel like they need to or they can as far as as far as the jerseys, as long as it's kept in the context that, nigga, this is like, this is a gesture. So when it came down to them actually not playing a playoff game, I said, like, oh, we got action. Because, you know, I got a lot of shit from people. You talk about this black shit, but you're, you're still watching the NFL. Because I'm like, if every black fan didn't buy any NFL merch, didn't go to an NFL game, didn't watch NFL on the TV... And by the way, unless you have a Nielsen device, it doesn't matter. They're not checking your ratings. But, okay, you don't go to a bar, and commerce is affected. So not just the fact you're not watching football, but you're not buying jerseys, you're not going to B-dubs and buying beers and everything, and, and businesses are filling it. The NFL, that would be the most effective form of that blackout, and even then the NFL will probably be like, okay, so? Because at the end of the day, the players have to do something. There is no NFL without us. There isn't. So if they sat a game out, yeah, I wouldn't watch football. Not only because they're not playing, but because I rock with you. You know what I mean? But they're, they're, not, they're not willing to do that because, I mean, I get it. You worked your whole life to get here. Um, and in, the, in football particularly, you have, what, three, four years is the average year, uh, average career in the NFL to do anything. And there's always the next man waiting for, you know, injuries happen where people lose their job and, and never get it back in the NFL. So I, I, I understand that. But at the same time, it's like, Keep it, keep it real because Cap risked it all and you motherfuckers all, all y'all had to do was just get behind him and yeah it's years after the fact now they're doing these little paltry oh we were wrong about this we should have listened to him you still not listening to him because the motherfucker ain't throwing a ball the fuck and it's just like cancer you know the NFL does what October or September one of the months where they do the pink and everything uh, for, for breast cancer but it's like they don't give a fuck about breast cancer. It's just they got in trouble with you know the, the sexism and everything like that for the women and everything. So they make a donation, they 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 pink out their stuff. They sell more merch, so it makes them more money. They make a donation and it's business as usual. Now, am I saying that cancer foundation should give the money back? Fuck no. But you gotta understand that it's a marketing machine. That's all this is. Mike told us before, Michael Jackson. That is, all he wanted to say was they don't really care about us. That that's just what it is. So I do give the NBA a little bit more credit, at least from the leadership. Um, I still don't trust them, but at least there there's measurables. Uh, what's the dude's name? Uh, Stern, David Stern. He's the commissioner of the NBA. Commissioner of NBA. Oh, sorry. Who's David Stern? Adam Silver is the commissioner of the NBA. So let me Google David Stern. Where do I get that name from? American lawyer. Oh, he died. He was the old one. See, I know I wasn't tripping. Uh, yeah, so I, I give them credit for at least, you know, empowering their players to do it versus what the NFL was trying to do was shut up and play ball. But at the end of the day, at the end of the, it's just gestures. So for them to stop playoff basketball, especially in this environment where they're already in a bubble, where the NBA has said, hey, we need to play games because it's too much money on this. COVID be damned, but we're going to go do it in a bubble. And then to stop it there, I was like, we got action. And then just as quickly as it started, it stopped. Now, I wasn't in the room. I was in the office from what I understand. Even Obama weighed in, and that's a powerful voice. Whether or not you agree with him or not, he's going to have influence on everybody in those locker rooms who grew up 
who's younger than us and, and, and watched a black president get elected. So it is what it is. Um, I guess the argument being, at least this is me assuming, because I don't have any NBA insiders, that they felt that their platform was more useful with people watching them and making statements. I, on the one hand, that's clearly a cop out because they just want to keep getting their contracts honored and the NBA needs to make something happen. But at the same time, it's like the fact that they were willing to do that, that's unprecedented that, that a playoff game, a postseason game, stopped to the point where even the other sports just stopped games. But for, but for where the money truly comes, the, the playoff games, and in this environment where the NBA basically has sports in a, in a, in a, in a chokehold because the, basketball is pretty much the only sport where it's practical to do a bubble, and then they stop. You know, I think there's potential there. Unfortunately, I think somebody else is going to have to die and hit, catch headlines to see what they do then if they do another game or if they just say, fuck it, we're hanging it up until this happens. Because that's what's going to have to happen. It's, it's bigger than basketball. It's it's that the CEOs, these, these millionaires and billionaires that own these teams are going to have to start lobbying, lobbying their politicians for us. Instead of going to their politicians, asking for the city of whatever the hell to subsidize this new stadium they don't need to move our team there, they're going to say, hey, my team's going to die if my players aren't happy. Get your cops together. That's what has to happen. I don't need I don't need commercials. I don't need jingles. I don't need inclusive Nike ads, campaigns, whatever. I need these billionaire team owners to lobby these, these congressmen, to lobby these elected officials the way they do for their tax breaks, the way they do for their land grants, the way they do for their loans. And the only way to do that is to hit them in the pockets. Again, it's easy for me to say I, I never made it to that level of any kind of sport. I've never had millions in my face to walk in, away from, but at the end of the day, if you're going to say something, then be about it. Like, if you're going to talk it, be about it. If not, just shut up. It costs nothing to shut the fuck up. Except maybe your own self-respect. But that's for you to pay. Not us. Keep forgetting, man. What else we got here? And speaking of, well, I want to phrase it. I want to frame this correctly. With the white mediocrity and the black excellence going on to Steve Nash and his new coaching appointment. Now, this is not Steve Nash hate. Like I said, I didn't really watch basketball, but when I did, I know that Steve Nash is that dude, okay? And I think that if there's a single position on the basketball court that would translate best to a coach, it's the point guard because the point guard is the one running the place. So you need to, just like quarterbacks can make great coaches, in the NFL, or really centers and, and linemen who are calling the protection make uh, great coaches in the NFL. The same thing with a point guard in the NBA. So it, it makes sense. I, I think Jason Kidd was a pretty decent coach. Um, I think Teron Lou was a guard. I don't know if he was a point guard or not, but he, he, he was a decent coach. But then that brings it up. It's like Teron Lou has gone to a championship. He's won a championship. Granted, he had LeBron James, but still. So... Why didn't his phone ring? Why didn't Mark Jackson's phone ring? He built what is the, well, not the current Warriors, but the Warriors we knew just, a, it was all good just a year ago, two years ago. Those Warriors, he built them. How his phone didn't ring? And I'm sure Steve Nash is going to do a great job, but it's just like, what do we have to do to be on equal footing to at least get the same look? You know, when, I, when I'm going to do a video series on my YouTube channel about why I'm not in the military anymore. And it's the same shit, white mediocrity versus black excellence. And I'm one of the lucky ones because, honestly, I could have been shot in the back of the head by a cop, but I just lost my career, not my life. And it would have been in North Dakota. There would have been no hashtags. There would have been no parades or, or, or protests or riots or for me up there. It just would have been it. They would, have, they would have found a picture of me at a cute party, my shirt off, doing whatever, and said I was a loose cannon. That would have been a story of me. So, I mean, I, I wish Steve Nash the best, especially, I, f I feel like, you know, he, what he, he's got Durant and, uh, like I said, I don't watch him. Hold on. Oh, yeah, Durant, Kyrie. 
Yeah, DeAndre too. Oh, okay. Yeah, man. So uh, that seems like a good a good uh, situation there, and I, I, I wish him well. But it's just like you gotta wonder what what else has to happen, where even the people who played the game the best and and have coaching success don't get looked at the same way. I don't know. Uh, what else is going on here? In other news, uh, evidently there's a bunch of boats. <laughs> so there was like a Trump rally in Texas on a, on a lake or some shit, and uh, a bunch of the boats sank, which the irony upon irony stacked on with the metaphors is just fucking comedy. All right. Uh, so this was in Texas. And, you know, it's a, a Trump parade, which is funny to me because over this past summer, uh, the one little bit of AK we got was that my sister, who is married to a white guy, shout out Curtis, um, his mom's side of the family had like cabins down in uh, the Emerald Island in North Carolina. So we went down there for a week and uh, not cabins, but like, you know, those little beach houses or whatever. And uh, it's a tradition they do. So this is our first year going with them. So it was a good time. And. You just saw these boats everywhere with all these. Uh, it was Fourth of July weekend, I think. Yeah, it was Fourth of July weekend. So they had all the um, American flags everywhere. Trump this fireworks and everything. Just people in boats, you know, out there drinking with their Trump flags. So that's the image that I had. And then the boats are sink. And then you come to find out, and this is just a rumor, obviously I wasn't there, that it wasn't just like your typical water mishaps uh, where people are drinking and boating and. and Doing that, whoa! Anytime white people start doing that, whoa! I, I get fucking paranoid because you gotta wonder where's the nearest rope and all this other shit. But um, yeah. So I thought that that was just what happened—just boating, alcohol, a bunch of Trump tards. I saw a, a photo of a boat, a large boat, a yacht, if you will, uh, that was on fire. And but then come to find out, it was because there were a lot of larger boats were speeding through the lake, the the throughways creating large wakes which were toppling over smaller boats and of course it caused them to capsize and just the irony there it's just like the fact of the matter is you're you have a boat so you must be doing pretty well in life because if you ever owned a boat boats are a money pit uh just from even if you don't even if you use the boat a lot or if, if you just let the boat sit there just keeping it uh c-shape and 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 the maintenance and checking it out, you know, properly, and then knowing what you're doing, the licensing, registration, boats are money pits. So then if you have a nice boat, clearly you got disposable income for this because you're not living on it. And then if you got one of these big, huge boats, you super made it. But just the illusion that you think you made it, you're out here to have your nice little boat in time with the rest of the rednecks. A, a bigger fish threw you to the side and caused you to sink. If that's not Trump's America, I don't know what is. This is comedy. Fucking hilarious. And now they're talking about coming to Georgia with it over at Lake Lanier. And here, everybody from Georgia that I know swears Lake Lanier is haunted. I don't fuck with ghosts. I don't believe in ghosts. Uh, if ghosts were real, there would be a lot of string of white folk from our ancestors and whatever. But whatever. All right. But if it is haunted, and then they can't get it straight whether or not. Well, I'm sure somebody in Georgia knows. But everybody I talk to, it, it goes back and forth between it was a bunch of black people that got flooded out to make this lake. And then there was native. It was a Native American burial ground. Whatever it may be, whoever it is, both of them got plenty of grievances against Trump's America. If they have this rally, do your thing, ghosts. Do your thing. Now is the motherfucking time. But I don't know. This is a bizarre world that that we live in right now. And just turning on the news is just, just what the fuck. You know, more death, more more nonsense outside. Evidently, some some pilot. I don't know if this has been debunked yet. Swore he saw a fucking jetpack as he was trying to land, and so now it's like we got Mandalorians invading. Like what? Who 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 knows? Um, what else we got here? Oh, shout out to my homie Janelle. Went to school at Tuskegee. Whether she sent me this Instagram uh picture, which. If you notice, I got the green screen. I'm, I'm in the process of editing. If when you're watching this on YouTube, you see not a green screen, then I was successful. If not, maybe next week. <laughs> but I'll also attempt to do a picture in picture so those of you watching this can uh, can look at it on my screen without having to go to Instagram. But in the event that I'm also unsuccessful there, where is it at? You guys go over to Instagram. It's Talks With Me 
and there's two E's in me. Um, there's a post, and I'm assuming she has a podcast because there's a microphone here. But it says, my wife tricked me into practicing fake celibacy with her. And I already knew that this was going to be some bullshit. But I'll read y'all the post. Subject. My wife tricked me into practicing fake celibacy with her. Hey, at Talks With Me, I just found out that my wife was sleeping with other men while we were dating. When we started dating, she asked me to practice cel celibacy with her. At first, I was a little hesitant, but I loved and respected her, so I agreed. We didn't have sex until we got married. She made me wait three years. My wife used to play around and say, you know I'm single until you put a ring on it, right? I never thought anything of it, but now I know she was dead ass. And right there, let me put a pause in it real quick, is when I knew that this was a Negro. Because I swore this could only happen to white folk. I'm like, what? I thought maybe it might be black dude when he said a little hesitant. Because it's L-I-L. And then... The bird, you know, I'm single till you put a ring on it. But I'm, okay, that's not necessarily bird speech, but birds use it. But the dead ass lets me know that this is this is a brother. You probably want no, you probably wondering how I found out about her shenanigans. Well, her younger sister is dating my cousin, and she told him that my wife didn't stop hoeing until the day she walked down the aisle. Yeah, <laughs> you hope, nigga. My cousin then called me and told me everything. Why why you do that, cousin? Just shut the fuck up. Like, like we you now this man all distressed. Like, if you wasn't gonna tell him before, why you tell him now? When I confronted my wife about it, she basically said, Yes, I was abstaining from having sex with you. <laughs> I always told you that I was single until you put a ring on it. She tricked me. Nah, nigga, you tricked yourself. She made me believe she was this wholesome, God fearing, celibate woman, but all this time she was messing with all types of dudes. When I told her I was done with her ass, she let the cat out of the bag and revealed that she was pregnant. Now look at you, you big dummy. This whole situation is messed up, and I don't know what to do. Shit, at this point, I don't even know if the child is mine. What should be my next move? I'm going to go out on a limb and say he's still with it because then he ain't going nowhere. Because if he was really about that life, we wouldn't be having this conversation. And my friend Janelle tried to ask me what would I do in this situation. It's so beyond the realm of imagination because, nigga, I would never. Like, there was so much I would never in this. I'm not waiting no fucking three years for you. What the fuck? For three years for what? Because, like, okay, we do this and then we get married and then your sex is whack. Plot twist, that's not even worst case scenario because now there's this shit. But, no, I'm not, I'm not getting married to somebody with, with whack pumps. Like, like, that, no. I don't buy cars without test driving. What, what am I going to do this for? Then, on top of that, it's like, let's say this somehow did happen to me that I waited for three years and found out, what the fuck is that to talk about, my nigga? Like, you you really need to get the fuck away from me. Oh, I'm pregnant with your child. Okay, well, maybe it's my kid, and if it is, I'm going to put your ass on papers. Get the fuck away from me. For your own safety, you need to get the fuck away from me. I don't understand this, but then again, I don't pretend to speak for any, any man. Um... Oh, I said micro SD card has limited space. We're going to take a break while I figure out what's going on with my card. All right, we back. Memory card change. I don't know. I didn't. That could have been no eight gigabyte file, but whatever. That's a lot. Uh, where do we leave off? Not really sure. Boat sinking. Yeah, I think I mean I pretty much said everything I wanted to say about that. Uh. On to the topic, Xavier University, down in New Orleans, Louisiana, New Orleans, New Orleans, New Orleans, New Orleans, New Orleans whatever. Uh, my sister currently is a student there, and she is a graduating senior uh, in their pre-med pre program. And for those of you who don't know, well, there's levels that don't know. If you went to an HBCU, what I'm about to say is not going to surprise you, uh, even though this is, even for us, pretty bad in my opinion. But for the last three years, Xavier has been, to put it politely, mishandling their freshman intake and housing situation. When my sister went down there, she got freshman housing, of course. But as soon as her next year, her sophomore year, she was forced to go find housing elsewhere because the university brought in a, quote, record amount of freshmen, and they had to give the freshmen priority housing. Now... You know, shit happens, and this, this, this is still terrible, but this shit happens. But it's one thing if shit happens, but they told these kids this after they've gotten off planes uh, two days before classes start. 
moreover, how the hell does that happen? Like you, the university, know how many slots you have. You know what, what your capacity is. You tell people yes or no. So you didn't accidentally overbook. And if you did, maybe what, five, 10, 20 students? No, enough that you got to clear dorms for these people. And it's clearly a money grab. It's clearly a money grab where, because, you know, at the end of the day, we go, we go to college or watch a different world at the very least and said that, seen that, look to the left of you, look to the right of you. One of you is not going to be here in four years. But unfortunately, with HBCUs in particular, at least it's been my experience, I did four years at an HBCU and then I did my fifth year at a PWI. And I'm not saying PWI is perfect or anything, but I'm just telling you my experience as someone with a degree from an HBCU that it comes down to the fact that college is a business, I understand that, and, and they need money. But it's, our HBCUs are, exist because they have a responsibility to our community. So on the one hand, it's, it's amazing that they give people an opportunity to go to college who probably wouldn't get a chance at PWI schools. That's, that's fine, PWI schools, PWIs. That's fine. But you're supposed to have a vested interest in their success. You can't make it, you can't, uh, you can lead a horse to water, you can't make them drink. I understand that. But you're supposed to be fostering an environment and, and, and doing everything you can to make sure these kids matriculate. And kicking them off campus is not in that vein. But the fact of the matter is, by the time you've done that, you've already obligated them to finish their degrees, at least in part, at your school because accreditation or, you know, having credits transfer that may not transfer or they, what do you care? You've already gotten their Pell Grant money. You've already gotten their student loans. You got paid. You got your money. Let's get some more. That's, that's how you're looking at it. And it's become painfully obvious. Okay. So one off year, whatever. And, and then they didn't even want to make it their problem after, after the students raised hell about, Oh, okay, well we'll talk about to this other college who either is either has extra buildings or is closed. Oh, we'll get you housing here, but you got to, keep our meal plan even though the cafeteria is miles away and we're not going to have transportation for you. Oh, by the way, you got to pay for your own Wi-Fi and all this other bullshit. Like, what? what? And Xavier's not cheap. Especially out of state. That's unset. But okay, one off year, right? They have done this every year since my sister's sophomore year. Okay? Every year. Now you factor in a global pandemic. The housing situation is already jacked up. Now they do this again. And oh, by the way, the latest bullshit comes in letter format. And I'm going to read this to you. Um, it's a two. How many pages is this? One. Okay, no, it's a one page letter. It's just my sister sent it to me twice. I'm going to read it to you. From the desk of C. Reynolds Verrett, Xavier University of Louisiana, and Walter M. Kimbrough, President, Dillard University. Dear students, staff, and faculty of Dillard and Xavier Universities, our communities have been hit hard by the COVID-19 pandemic with harrowing consequences for the lives and health of our fellow citizens. Overcoming the virus will require the availability of vaccines effective for all peoples in our communities, especially our black and brown neighbors. Phase three vaccine trials have begun across the nation, including in New Orleans. It is of the utmost importance that a significant number of black and brown subjects participate so that the effectiveness of these vaccines be understood across the many diverse populations that comprise these United States. We, the presidents of Dillard and Xavier, are already participating in the Ochsner Medical Systems, I don't, know, I don't know if I'm saying that right, it's O-C-H-S-N-E-R, Medical Systems Current Vaccine Trial, which is underlined. As part of the study, we received our injections and have been monitoring and reporting any symptoms and side effects. Upon our enrollment, we were fully informed and any possible risks that would exclude us from the study were disclosed. We are both well. We appeal to the students, faculty, staff, and alumni of Dillard and Xavier and our sibling institutions to consider participating in this trial or others being conducted. The people and communities we serve look at us, excuse me, the people and communities we serve look to us as an example. Our participation in such studies will help find ways to better fight the pandemic. As presidents of HBCUs, we do recall unethical examples of medical re oh you think motherfucker, I was wondering if you were gonna touch this. We remember the Tuskegee Civilist study. 
which misused and caused harm to African Americans and other people of color, undermining trust in health providers and caretakers. Today, there are many regulations in place to assure the ethical execution of medical studies. Oh, ethical uh, regulations, that, that should do it. Including oversight by human subjects committees with diverse membership and particip participation of clinicians of color. You mean like Ben Carson? Shut up. Two of the leading physicians are doctors Julia Garcia Diaz and Evans Laborde. We hope that you will consider enrolling. You may send an email to COVID, COVID vaccine at oxner.org or leave a message at 504-703-8283. Feel free to spam that bullshit ass number because what the fuck to receive more information. We have before us a significant opportunity to serve and advance the cause, not just for ourselves, but for our sisters and brothers suffering from the effects of this virus on their fam on their families and communities. We are dealing we are safe. Get the fuck out of here. You are a fuck boy. That's what you are. Where the fuck did they get off and, and had the, the nerve, the audacity, the unmitigated gall to bring up the Tuskegee syphilis study, which they didn't misuse black people. They, they, they used us as they saw fit, as lab rats. And now you want these students who you can't even house properly as is. But now, let's say this fucking trial gets out of hand. Then what? Where are they supposed to live? You ain't figured that shit out. Stop. I'm honestly, I don't even know where to go with this other than I hope y'all y'all see this shit. I hope any, nobody listening to this has anybody that goes to Xavier right now. But this is some bull shit. Like, send this shit to Tulane, who's got a medical school. Send this shit to, to any of them other schools. Because... Tylenol don't care if I'm black. Tylenol don't care if I'm white. So, so if the vaccine works, it's going to work. Let them figure that shit out. Don't get me wrong. I am not an anti-vax person. And black people have been irritating me for months. Because they're not even... I'm not telling you not to take a vaccine. I'm telling you not to relax your standards and not be skeptical. Okay? There's room for both. But the fact of the matter... And, and black and brown people are the most disproportionately uh, affected by this pandemic. Because we're the most disproportionately affected by anything negative from a health crisis to, to, to socioeconomic injustice to, to anything. It's going to hit us harder because we are the most vulnerable. So if there is a vaccine, black people need to take the fucking vaccine. But that's if. Not no rush bullshit that's, that's some guinea pig shit. Make them figure this shit out. We are not fucking guinea pigs. And I got into it with uh, particularly some of my African and Haitian friends because they were talking about this over in Africa where, uh, you know, the whole Bill Gates, I'm not getting into that fucking conspiracy theory with y'all right now, but, oh, they want to test it on Africans. And, and I understand the distraction. And, yeah, don't get tested on. Do not let them just bring you some bullshit that they haven't tried elsewhere. But the fact of the matter is, if and when a viable vaccine is available, black people need to take it. But this ain't that. And the fact that our, our the, the leaders of these institutions are pulling for this all the while you see you see the regard that they have for their students under normal circumstances that they just cast them to a city regardless of uh, they don't care how they get the, to school if they're if they're living somewhere safe in the city if they have the resources they need to do their work the wi-fi the printers and if they can even fucking eat and now you want these motherfuckers to be lab at least lab rats get fucking fed and monitored but you don't give a shit just come in and stick this shit into my veins and then go about your business fuck you you can tell them I said it too. Like, like oh my fucking god. Yeah, if if any of my uh friends, Facebook friends, are or anybody listening to this is a lawyer or just got time, spam these motherfuckers and let them know that this shit is not okay. And, and if if you don't have ties to Xavier, but you have ties to your own HBCU, bring this shit up because I'm sure it's happening elsewhere. I'm sure. This is some refried bullshit. I cannot believe this. My sister ain't taking that shit. Believe that. All right. Enough of the heavy shit, I guess. So, back on Xavier, but in a better light. Um, on my Facebook, again, if a lot of you probably don't follow my Facebook because I can't add any more. Well, I got a little bit more room, but I'm saving those precious few spots for people. But you can always follow me on Twitter at the penis or the penis mitre, however you want to say it. D A P as in Paul, E N I Z as in Zulu, M I G H T I E R. 
or um, obviously on this podcast. Uh, we're on Spotify and Breaker now. But hold on, let me check my anchor. I think I got added to some more people. Available on five platforms. Let's list them off. Oh, nigga, I'm on it. No, that's not Apple. Look at that. So Anchor, Breaker, Google Podcasts, Radio Public, and Spotify. Manual distribution. Oh, okay. So yeah, I, I have a link now that I can submit it to Apple. So I'll be working on that in the near future because I know a lot of you are eye whores. But whatever. We'll, we'll, we'll get that at another time. But I wanted to bring up a artist on my Facebook. I asked because I'm in the search for, you know, an intro and outro. But I also see an opportunity where I can showcase some creatives, some black creatives. You don't got to be black, but some black creatives uh, who might not get a look elsewhere, who are on the uh, on the come up. And, you know, I'm not trying to make any money off of it. And I'm not going to charge. I'm not going to charge them. And I told them they can't charge me because I ain't got no money. But we have a submission and i like it now i listen to it already but i think in the future i might just do a cold listen with you guys so you guys can get my reaction for you know for the for the pot if you will but this one comes out from a guy named mateo and mateo hails from he was born in los angeles and in his own words he creates cathartic he creates art through cathartic experiences. He believes that music is the universal language that has been used to change the world and transform people's lives. He's a doctoral student at Xavier University of Louisiana, and he teaches foreign languages in Northeast Louisiana public school system. He only has a couple singles at this time, and they are on digital platforms right now, but more of his music and singing can be found on SoundCloud. I'll post this SoundCloud link in the description, but for those of you listening, it's http colon four slash four slash soundcloud.com forward slash mateo spelled m a t as in tango e as an echo o one nine six three or on his ig at native soul the o and soul is actually a zero and uh, i've got his track here it's called magnolias and mattresses and it's a vibe so enjoy Who said you can? Truth is the wild away. I fell so high, running through the process. Your prayer in my heart, back in my ears and mattresses. Held on far too long, messing up my karma. So enjoy a happy ending as long as I.
fucks with that hort. It's called Magnolias and Mattresses by Mateo. Again, make sure you guys check out his SoundCloud uh, and hit him up, man. Make him t- put that fire on him and give us some more. Cause that was, I fuck with it. I hate you singing ass niggas, dog. Do you understand what could happen? I could sing. I I'll use my powers for you. But I wouldn't be trying to like be famous just singing to random baddies in the mall. Like, yeah, it's probably why I can't sing. Anyway. Uh, yeah, that was hot. I liked it. I said incense and dim light music. Yeah. Shouldn't listen to that by myself. Now I'm in my feels. Anyway, um, that's pretty much it for this pod right now. Um, more to follow, obviously, next week. My goal, I'm deciding on whether or not to, uh, drop these on Mondays or Tuesday. Uh, I think I'm leaning more towards Tuesday because I feel like a bunch of people drop on Monday, but at the same time, who cares? So it'll be one of those days. Um, but this one's only coming out late because, like I said, I had a lot going on this weekend. Um, as always, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention that it's still a great day to bring justice to the killers of Breonna Taylor. Uh, if you've got a minute, go spam that fucking Caillou looking ass, coon ass prosecutor who's dragging his fucking feet, who had the nerve to say her name at the goddamn Republican National Convention, like it's not him holding up what we need. Fuck him. Uh, obviously, we, we want to see justice for Jacob Blake. I am glad that he is no longer chained by his useless legs now that, that were stolen from him by a fucking coward. Um, it's going to come to a head, man. It really is. Um, I hate, who is that? Robert Horry? Was it Horry? That made uh that went on ESPN and one day he was like real emotional talking about his conversation with his son. Oh, let me look. Let me just be throwing shit out here, Robert Horry. Son conversation. I'm just googling shit. Yeah, so Robert Horry went on uh went on TV and basically was talking about how this conversation that so many black men have with their kids about. It. Just making it back home and doing what you have to do. Step on your pride, swallow it, because we can deal with that tomorrow. You got to get back. And then to a place of truth and race, and if that if they kill you, I'm going to kill them. But then he had to walk it back because that scared the white people. Fuck y'all! Because that, that's exactly the time we need to be on. They're not going to stand the shit until it gets back. Um, I don't know, maybe he had investments and other shit he got to protect by walking it back, but no, he didn't. No, he didn't. And he meant what he said, and he said what he meant. It is what it is. Um, y'all stay safe out here, man. I don't I don't want to read about anybody that I know any more than I want to read about the people I don't know because we're all family. Uh, but at the same time, all skin folk and kin folk, we got to police these coons. We got to do animal control. Um, again, askaeps at gmail.com if you want me to talk about something or if you want me to have something out. If, you have, if you're an up-and-coming artist that you would like me to feature your music or on here, Go ahead and uh, hit me up. Basically, I just need an email blurb saying that I have permission to use your music, that you are the sole creator, uh, so I'm not going to get sued at some point by this, that, and you know I'm not paying you, and I need a downloadable version. Downloadable version of it. So, yeah. MP3 preferably, but whatever. Um, that's all I got. Remember, in your daily lives and everywhere you go, control your experience at all times, and I hope I see you next week. Have a good one. Why? Because we're living under the system.